I think more kids are ruined by the behavior of their parents than by the amount of the inheritance that uh, the yeah. Yeah. Your, 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 your children are learning about the world through you and more through your actions than through your words, you know, from the moment they're born. You're their, te you're their natural teacher. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a very, it's a very important and serious uh, job. And uh, uh, I don't think, I don't actually think that the amount of money that a rich person leaves to their children is the determining factor at all in terms of how those children turn out, but I think that the atmosphere and what they see about them and how their parents behave uh, is enormously important. Uh, I, I would say this, I've, I've loosened up a little bit as I go along. Every time I rewrite my will, my kids are happy because they know I'm not reducing the amount anyway. And, <laughs> I, and I, do, I do something else I, that, that I find that, which I think is an obvious thing, but, but uh, uh, it's amazing to me how many people don't do it. I, I think that your, your, your children are going to read the, the will someday. Let's assume you're a wealthy person. Your children are going to read the will, will someday. It's crazy to have them read it after you're dead for the first time. I mean, they, they're, you know, you're not in a position to you know, answer questions then unless, unless the Ouija board really works or something of the sort. And uh, so if they're going to have questions about how to carry out your wishes or, or why you did this or that, you know, why leave them endlessly wondering after you die? So in, in, a, in my own case, I always have my children, only I rewrite a will every five or six years or something like that, and, and I have them read it. They're the executors under it. They should understand <clears throat> how to carry out uh, their obligations that are embodied in the will, uh, and they should also, if they feel there's anything unfair about it, they should express themselves before I sign that will, and we should talk it over, and we should figure out whether they're right or I'm right, or, or someplace in between. So, I do think it's I think it's very important in wealthy families. Once the kids are of a certain age, I mean, I don't advise doing this with your 14 year old or something, but but uh, uh, when they get, to, you know, certainly by the time they're in the mid 30s or thereabouts, I think I think they should be participants in the will, and I do think that that if you get to be very wealthy, that the idea of, of trying to pass on, create a dynasty of sorts, it just it sort of runs against the grain as far as I'm concerned. And the money has far more utility. Uh, you know, the last hundreds of millions or billions have far more utility to society than they would have to make it, create a situation where your kids don't have to do anything in life except uh, call a trust officer once a year and tell them how much money they want. Charlie? I don't think I want to go into this one. Okay. <laughs> and I, I'm absolutely sure you don't want to discuss your will with your children if you're going to treat them unequally. No. Uh, <laughs> that is poison. But they're, one of the problems you have, I mean, and what you want to discuss just for that very situation is there may be, there may be circumstances where one child yeah. will have much more of an interest in one type of asset than another or something of the sort. And if you, you want to make sure that, the, that y your, your definition of equality in terms of handling different kinds of assets is that is, uh, meshes, uh, or at least is understood by the children so that they don't think the fact that you gave one a farm and another a house or something of the sort resulted in inequality when you thought it was equality. <laughs> Charlie, you got any? No, I'm. He's staying away from this one. 